Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley, and this is part of a crash course on Framer, a tool for designing and prototyping projects. On this video, we're going to learn how to enable targeting to layers so they're usable in the code tab. We'll also learn about their layout and hierarchy and some of their other properties. Pretty simple stuff. Let's get started. When you place a layer on the canvas in Framer, it is smart enough to guess the layer's hierarchy based on its visual position. This position is also reflected here on the hierarchy of the layers panel. Let's look at this example. These two circles are higher than the blue rectangle, but once I drag them on top of the rectangle, then they go below here on the layers list because now they are a child of the rectangle. Let me drag this one too and you will see that this red oval is a child of the green oval, which is also a child of the blue rectangle. And all of this was done automatically. And now if I drag it, it looks like it's a group. It is really important to understand the constant of this relationship. So for example, here I have this icon that is inside this background layer. So it looks like it's a group and I drag them around like a group. But if I were to just drag this layer outside, then it will not be part of the group anymore because it's not a child of this parent. But if I drag it inside again, then Framer will automatically think that you want to have this as the child of this parent. And now if I drag him, they're together. Let's do the same here with this icon. Right now it's independent from this rectangle, but if I drag it inside here, now they're both together. And I didn't group them, this was done automatically. Once this parent and child relationship has been established, child layers will always mimic the behavior of, it, of its parent layer. Let's resize this artboard and see the results. Look at this. Right now, since I put these layers closer to the border, Framer is understanding that I want them to be pinned to the background layer, which is the parent of them. So if I resize it, you will see that they don't stretch, they only are pinned and the, the padding and the sizing remains the same. If I do the same to the artboard, you will see the same happening. And also these layers remain centered to the artboard. If I were to drag them closer to one corner, then it remains fixed, it remains pinned. It is also good to understand the alignment properties of the layers. The alignment properties obey the position of the parent. For example, this child layer, if I align it here to the left, it aligns to the left of the parent, not of the artboard. If I align it to the center, it aligns to the center, and so on. If I were to align this one too, it would align to the bottom, center, top of the parent layer. Let's do the same here with this one. If I want to align it to the center, I just want to click here on the center, and now it's aligned to the center of the parent. Now if I resize the parent, the layer remains in the center. If I resize this parent too, this layer remains pinned to the top. To make the layers you design and framer usable in the code tab, you have to enable targeting. Let's enable targeting for this little button. I just selected, and here on the layers list, you will see a little icon that looks like a target. If I just click on it, now I have enabled targeting for this group. I'm going to go to the code tab, and you will see that now it's enabled, and I can add animations, states, or events. Continue watching so you can learn how to add animations, states, and events on layers that you have enabled targeting. 